good afternoon, everybody. Uh, so I'm Kausu Vasu. I'm a PhD student at the Institute of National Dental Research Scientific with Professor Vitrone and Professor Zay. Uh, the title of today's talk will be Thin Oxide Photoanodes for Dye-Sensitized Solar Cell. So uh, for, this uh, for this talk, I'm going to uh, introduce two, two of my projects. In the first project, I'm preparing a thin oxide photoanode where I'm using uh, thin oxide and also fluorine doped thin oxide powders and making a paste to prepare my photoanode and then uh, hereby test the solar cells. And uh, for the second project, I'm using fluorine doped thin oxide supported on reduced graphene oxide and I'm mixing it with titania and performing uh, and uh, uh, preparing my uh, solar cells to uh, and uh, also doing a test for my solar cells. <coughs> so first, let me introduce what is a, a dye-sensitized solar cell for people who are not aware, some people uh, here. So, uh, so basically, dye-sensitized solar cell is a low cost and it's like uh, a, a front runner in the, uh, in the solar cell technology when it comes to uh, the price and performance ratio. Uh, and also, attractive feature for dye-sensitized solar cell is the transparency. Nowadays, we can also see there it, it's a uh, we can put it on the windows and where we can have like a cool shade and also like uh, uh, a, a good uh, photon to electron uh, conversion. And uh, we can also see, uh, I, re I recently saw a, a research where uh, it's already in the market, I guess, uh, where, where they put dye sensitized solar cells on the sunglasses and they're also powering some uh, iPods and those stuff with the, yeah. And so, yeah, uh, so the dye sensitized solar cell uh, concept has been inspired from the photosynthesis of the uh, plants where the plants absorb the sunlight and uh, in the chlorophyll, uh, the microscopic absorption of the sunlight uh, in the chlorophyll and the photolysis of uh, water into hydrogen and oxygen and all the microscopic electron collection process and where they actually uh, uh, use the hydrogen and reduce carbon uh, dioxide to carbohydrate. Uh, but, it, uh, but in case of... Uh, uh, PN junction uh, devices, conventional PN junction devices, we use the same semiconductor where we uh, uh, absorb the light and also transport the uh, electrons. So uh, the basic working mechanism of a uh, dye sensitized solar cell is like uh, when we shine a dye sensitized solar cell uh, with the light, we absorb uh, the, whole, the, the photons get absorbed in the HOMO of the Die and it promotes an electron from the homo to the lumo of the dye, and the uh, dye then uh, injects the electron uh, in the photoanode, and the photoanode uh, and the electron in the photoanode then uh, uh, travels by diffusion process and reaches the counter electrode of the circuit through the transpired conducting oxide and the outer circuit. Uh, so when the, the electron is promoted from the homo to the lumo of the photoanode uh, of the dye, uh, then it uh, gets oxidized and it's a uh, reduced by the redox mediator, that is the electrolyte, and itself gets uh, reduced, which is in turn uh, oxidized by the electron that's coming, uh, coming from the uh, outer circuit. So, yeah, so the photoanode material actually uh, plays an important role in uh, uh, like the dye loading, the electron transportation, and also the injection. So for uh, effective dye loading, it should have like a high surface area so that it can uh, absorb a number of uh, Huge, uh, huge number of uh, dye molecules, and uh, and hence uh, it can uh, absorb uh, more, uh, more photons and convert more photons to electrons. And uh, the electron, uh, the the band gap of the semiconductor must be uh, must match with the, that of the dye, so that we can have effective uh, electron injection from the dye to the uh, uh, to the semiconductor in photoanode. And uh, high electron uh, mobility is also important factor because uh, since the, uh, uh, since, the, uh, since the electrons in the photoanode moves through, uh, through diffusion mechanism, it's like a random walk process, so better uh, electron mobility is, uh, uh, should be better. And <coughs> so uh, uh, in, in general, uh, when we see a dye sensitized solar cell, uh, the majority of the publications uh, and also in the industry, it's with uh, titanium, uh, with uh, titania. And, uh, <clears throat> but we can also use uh, tin dioxide uh, because it's uh, becoming a, a promising uh, photoanode material because 
the first uh, criteria is uh, the first uh, advantage of using tin oxide is uh, because it has a much higher electron mobility. Uh, it's uh, it's much higher than the titania, and it also has a suitable band gap so that uh, effective uh, dye injection is possible. Uh, electron injection from the dye is possible, and also since it has uh, like a wider uh, band gap. Uh, uh, compared to its co uh, counterparts, it's uh, also low, low sensitive to, uh, to UV degradation. But uh, the problem, there are uh, some drawbacks with the tin oxide. One of the uh, major drawbacks is, is like, uh, since uh, there's a positive shift of the tin dioxide uh, conduction band, there is more recombination of electron, and also the dye uptake is uh, less compared to other uh, semiconducting uh, photoanodes used in dye sensitized solar cell. So uh, as I said, the, for the first project, I'm using tin dioxide and fluorine doped tin dioxide photoanodes uh, for preparing my dye sensitized solar cell. Uh, so the major driver for using uh, doping uh, the tin dioxide is uh, with fluorine. Uh, we already know that from the orbital configuration of oxygen, and uh, uh, because when we dope it, it's a uh, substitution. And uh, we, we can see from the orbital, uh, orbital configuration, it's like 2SU2P4 uh, and 2SU2P5. So for uh, each do uh, doping of fluorine, uh, atom of fluorine, we can get one excess of electrons. So it increases the conductivity. And uh, to prepare the paste uh, to fabricate the photoanodes, we are using uh, very small size nanopowders of uh, tin oxide around 2.2. And for fluorine doped tin oxide, around 3.3 nanometers. And these are uh, this is what we get from our collaborators in Berlin. Uh, also, there is a, uh, there is a drive for using uh, smaller size particles because uh, for smaller size particles, we, we know that the surface to volume ratio uh, is more. And if you have a better surface uh, to volume ratio, we can absorb uh, more dye. <coughs> so, uh, so we uh, prepared the photoanodes and also did the testing for the solar cells for uh, for uh, tin oxide uh, uh, photoanode solar cells and also uh, for fluorine doped tin oxide solar cells, uh, we can see that um, the performance uh, performance is around like for tin oxide around one percent and uh, for uh, we, what we expect, expected to have like a better performance for fluorine doped tin oxide uh, is uh, actually uh, it's lower and uh, uh, because uh, and also for the paste because uh, the paste is not uh, perfectly homogeneous so there is a variation of uh, thickness in the in the film uh, we did uh, the dye loading measurements and uh, and here is like uh, how we uh, achieve the, the dye calibration curve we have like different uh, concentrations of dye and then we uh, plot the, uh, at the, the, the absorption at 530 nanometers and then we finally fit uh, our uh, absorption from our uh, samples uh, to this curve and find out the dye loading. Uh, the dye loading for tin oxide photoanode is around 4.5 in 10 to the power minus 5 moles per centimeter cube. And fluorine uh, doped tin oxide is much lower, around one third. So this uh, can be a possible explanation for, uh, the, uh, for the lower performance of the uh, tin, uh, fluorine doped tin oxide photoanodes. But in general, we can see the dye loading is low. Uh, and uh, if you see the literature is around 10 times higher for uh, uh, the tin dioxide uh, uh, with the uh, bare tin dioxide. Uh, because what we thought, uh, like when we, uh, we have like very small particles, uh, we have uh, more uh, high, uh, like higher surface to volume ratio, but also uh, uh, because of the small size particles, it's, uh, it, it may be that uh, there is more packing and there is uh, less dye penetration. So we can, uh, I mean, uh, so, so finally, we can see that uh, there may be uh, that may be a, a reason for uh, lesser uh, dye loading for the doped uh, tin oxide. Uh, we also uh, did the uh, impedance spectroscopy analysis uh, for the two systems and uh, found out that if we look at the recombination uh, resistance of the uh, undoped system, it's uh, it's actually uh, higher. Uh, so it means there is less recombination, which can also be a uh, factor for uh, better performance in the uh, tin dioxide, uh, so uh, undoped uh, tin dioxide solar cell, and uh, uh, the the major drive for doping was to get higher conduction that we can uh, clearly uh, uh, yeah, we can uh, see from the series resistance of the cell, where we can see there is a much uh, the series resistance uh, in the doped uh, tin dioxide system is uh, much less compared uh, to the undoped one. So. 
so uh, so the, let's move to the se second project where I'm using like uh, the fluorine doped oxide supported on reduced graphene oxide, uh, and uh, I'm mixing with titanium to form my photoanodes. Uh, so uh, reduced graphene oxide and all our, all the other graphene allotropes has been uh, played a major role in transporting like the direct tra uh, transport of electrons, and uh, which can be uh, which can be better because uh, the the and the tra electron is tra uh, transporting through diffusion and the Van der Waals process, so it's better to have a, like a directed transport. And uh, so we try different uh, loading of uh, fluorine doped oxide uh, uh, RGO in the titania by weight ratio. We can see like uh, for different ratios, we get uh, uh, for around like 0.25 percent loading. These are all like single layer solar cells, so the thickness is around close to five per five uh, microns and uh, uh, we can improve, uh, uh, somewhat improve, like uh, the efficiency around 10% for, uh, like, uh, uh, from the 0% to the 0.25%. But uh, this, uh, 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 but these uh, actually, uh, like, uh, these are like preliminary results. Uh, so we need to uh, perform, uh, uh, like, uh, uh, more tests to, to confirm. Uh, and yeah, and we also did like. Uh, <clears throat> The impedance spectroscopy, and we found out like uh, for the for the series resistance of the uh, doped and the undoped, we can see the uh, that the uh, sorry the the unloaded graphene and the loaded graphene samples. Uh, with the graphene loaded samples, we can see it's more conducting uh, as we expected, and uh, but from the recombination resistance, we cannot uh, we cannot uh, like uh, uh, say uh, exactly something because uh, uh, for uh, for higher for higher voltages, we see like a uh, the better recombination, uh, I mean, higher recombination resistance uh, for the graphene, uh, and for lower resistance, uh, for lower bias, we can see like uh, uh, like a lower resistance uh, recombination. So we cannot uh, interpret something about from the recombination uh, data resistance recombination. So uh, so there are a few challenges. Although we have a, a good performance for the. Uh, uh, for the second project, but there are also a few challenges with the uh, graphene one. Like we have, uh, we have, uh, uh, we we need to stabilize uh, uh, more the, the 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 powder in the solvent uh, for a longer time, and also for for the for the previous project where I'm uh, using uh, tin oxide and also using the fluorine doped tin oxide, uh, uh, we have we have to make uh, like a more homogeneous space, and uh, because. Uh, we can also see that the smaller size particles uh, have uh, uh, what we wanted to exhibit uh, on the first time that the smaller size particles which have like a, a more surface to volume ratio uh, now we have to find a trade off uh, like uh, maybe not uh, go too higher and also uh, try to settle down in the middle where we have a good surface to ratio uh, ratio uh, volume ratio and also uh, like a, a good dye penetration and uh, yeah uh, for uh, for like uh, for the first project, uh, when we see the, the impedance spectroscopy results, it uh, it gives a clear hint that the uh, for dope system, uh, it's a uh, there is uh, the series resistance is much less, uh, so it has uh, more conducting. But we can also play with uh, the amount of doping uh, for uh, the fluorine atoms and uh, uh, yeah, and for the. Yeah, and and for uh, for the tin, uh, for for the other project like the fluorine doped tin oxide on graphene, uh, we can since we can uh, we already know that graphene has uh, provided uh, we can provide the directed transport. We can uh, do further uh, uh, experiments and optimize our results. <coughs> so finally, I'd like to acknowledge my professors, uh, Professor Fiorenzo Vetroner, Professor Jose, and also all my group members. And thank you for your attention.